Hello and welcome back to Broadside Gaming with me, Zug. And uh, yes, this is indeed a Dark Tide video, but um, a very, very unimpressive of the patch. So we're going to be looking at Hell uh, Hell Divers while I talk about the video. So let's just get a nice shot of that. Yeah, there we go, lovely. And uh, yeah, let's get back into it. So, what's new in patch seventeen? Uh, not a whole lot, to be honest. And this is why I'm kind of unimpressed and also why I'm not bothering to log out of Helldivers because I log out, can't get back in. So we're going to be talking about the patch while you look at my lovely outfit because, well, that's all patch 17 is anyway. It's just outfit upgrades. So let's go through it. So let's start off with new additions with Power Sword special, uh, special Action. Okay, so what have they done with this? Might it Could it be exciting? Oh, I hope it is. It's not. We have added a second weapon special activation action in the attack chain of the power sword. Ooh. This new activation allows the player to continue an attack chain if using the weapon special in the middle of one. This mid-chain activation was added to allow for a more varied attack pattern even with frequent uses of the weapon special. So the Minotaur and Mark III power sword, the new activation will chain into the second light or heavy attacks. These attacks are very similar to the first light and heavy, just mirrored. Okay. Minotaur Mark VI Power Sword. The new activation will chain into the second light attack or a new heavy that mirrors the first the first heavy diagonal down attack. Okay. Dev note. We hope that these changes will make the power swords. Uh, what? We hope that these changes will make using the power sword to purge heretics from Atoma Prime a more enjoyable experience. Well, you know. If the, if the tree was good, it might. Uh, anyway, and less so for the enemies of the Imperium, the Emperor protects. Fair enough. Uh, spectating HUD. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have enabled more HUD elements to be shown when spectating a player while waiting for rescue. We hope that this will give players more awareness of what is happening when the t uh, with the team whilst they wait. Okay, that is a good change because... When you were dead, you couldn't see health bars or anything, really. You were just kind of floating around. Orspect Scanner HUD. Okay, what have they done to the Orspect Scanner? Add an icon for the Orspect Scanner to the HUD on the bottom right of the screen, displaying only during scanner events. That should allow players to more easily see when they uh, can equip the scanner during these events. Okay, cool, I suppose. Uh, subtitles. Oh, this is going to be a big one. We are adding more improvements and fixes to our subtitle system in this patch as follows. Subtitles will now be prioritized by importance. Uh, two subtitles will be now displayed simultaneously. Simultaneously, this can be turned off or on in the interface settings. Player speaker indicators are now color coded by their assigned strike team color. Okay, that's an all right change. Speaker indicator settings now function as intended. Okay. So that's all that's new. Let's go for the bug fixes and general changes. Weapon descriptions. Um, they fixed a load of them because most of them were wrong. And that's that. Now on to the next one. Talents, abilities, blitz, keystones, and auras. Fixed so that shouts that target enemies require a direct line of sight to hit sleeping demon hosts. This affects both... Vet, uh, veteran talents, Shout of Command, and the Ogryn talent, Loyal Protector. So you can't hit them through walls anymore. Okay, that's good. Fixed an issue where abilities such as Veteran Talent, Voice of Command, and Ogryn talent, Loyal Protector did not apply aggro on the correct player when waking up a demon host. That's been around for a very long time. Fixed an issue where damage would spill over even with Zealot's Bolstering Prayer or Veteran's Voice of Command. Toughness bonus active. What the fixed issues where damage would spill over even with... Okay, that's just badly written. Fixed issue where projectiles could receive or trigger the buffs from the wielded weapon blessing in unintended ways. Uh, they're not really going to tell us how, but we yeah, there is a dev note. All projectiles, in, including projectiles from weapons like Psyker Force Staves and Ogryn Rumbler or player blitz abilities like the Sail or Blades of Faith will now only retrieve the buffs that were active when the projector was fired, thrown, spawned from the player, and keeps those buffs during its trajectory. This, for example, means that the projector will have the damage and power the player had when shooting it, and will not time out by the time it's hit its target. Okay. Ogryn. Fixed an issue where the Ogryn's 
talent Pulverize inflicted more bleed stacks than expected to enemies hit at the very end of the charge. Psyker slightly lowered the time of the damage animation of Brain Burst and Brain Rupture and should now scale properly with the speed increase from Kinetic Resonance and Empowered Psionics. Jesus, that's taken a while to fix. Fix an issue where the Psyker's Assail Blitz did not recover charges up to the Enhanced Cap of 12 in the Enhanced Blitz Maelstrom Mission Modifier. Veterans. Fix an issue where Get Back in the Fight Talent did not grant stun immunity on the attack that broke toughness. Fix an issue where Leave No One Behind Talent didn't properly grant faster assists. Fix an issue where Shock Trooper Talent causing rapid fire weapons consume ammo during critical strikes. Jesus, that is a that has been a long time coming. Okay, that might be the biggest thing they fixed here. They may have fixed Shock Trooper, folks. Fixed issue where the always prepare talent caused animation issues when switching to a weapon that is mid reload and you get ammo in the clip from the talent. Fixed issue where veteran based aura scavenger was stacking with the upgraded survivalist aura. Fixed an issue with field improvisation talent that would allow Ogrins to find big friendly rocks in ammo crates. Additional additional fixed an issue which prevents entered being able to pick up grenades from ammo crates affected by field improvisations when having a full ammo reserve but not a full grenade reserve. Smoke grenades should now stop enemies from shooting through the smoke instantly and prevent scab snipers from taking aim and shooting through the smoke, which means smoke grenades didn't work from the very beginning, which I always said, because they were rubbish. All they did was hamper your team, didn't actually stop the enemy from firing. Zealot. Fixed the action change to quick throw for the Zealot Blade of Faith Blitz on some weapons. Some specific attacks, like the Tolski Mark 7 Heavy Sword first light attack, could not be cancelled into Blades of Faith. Weapons Melee. General, a fixed issue on several melee weapons where you would cancel push follow-up attack before it executed to completion, if you also held the sprint button when starting the attack. Foldable shovels, shovels, Sapper Shovel Mark II and Mark Seven, Latrine Shovel Mark Fourteen and Mark Five, fixed incorrect action chaining from push with start action from foldable Sapper Shovel Mark II and Mark Seven, and foldable Latrine Shovels Mark Fourteen and Mark Five when the shovel is folded. By the time I got to the end of that sentence, I didn't even remember what the first bit said. Fixed incorrect action chain. Okay. Standard issue Minotaurum Sapper Shovel. Increased time it takes to unwield the weapon after using Weapon Special. To, pre to potentially prevent exploits of very high attack speed with Weapon Specials. Thunder Hammers. Fixed issue where activating the special attack from Thunder Hammers could interact with barrels, especially hitting them and wasting the attack. Uh, we've been asking that for a about a year. Weapon chain weapons. Fixed a crash that could happen when soaring enemies with chain weapons activated special attacks. Fixed a crash when you use the special. Power mauls. Fixed an issue where the uh, Inortus Mark 4E Crusher and Achilles Mark 1 power maul weapon special attacks explosion could appear as delayed. Demius Mark 4 Blaze Force Sword. Fixed an issue where heavy attacks were not displayed as strike down in the inspect menu. And let's look at the ranged weapons. The Manticore Mark II Plasma Gun mitigated the issue of invisible and inaudible plasma gun shots. We fixed an issue that made the chance of triggering invisible and inaudible shots very likely for the plasma gun. The issue may still reproduce when playing with a bad or unstable connection on the server, but should be much less likely now to happen. It's about time they fixed that. Shotguns and rippers fixed an issue where no ammo would be consumed when shooting a combat shotgun or ripper gun if swapping to another weapon at the same frame damage was applied. Fixed an issue where the combat shotgun and ripper guns would play sound effects but not shoot when starting to sprint. Added detailed damage numbers for combat shotguns, weapon special attacks in the weapon menu. Readings. Readings. Ripper guns. It increased default damage modifiers versus carapace from 0, 0, 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 to align and make it consistent between ripper guns uh, hip and braced shooting. Uh, Rifthaven Mark II purchased 4 star. Fixed an issue where the weapon and special attack 
could be cancelled before they could do any damage if spamming the special attack. Fair enough. Uh, let's look at the combat notes then. Fix an issue where uh, the Serenity Stim increased the charge time of attacks' ability instead of reducing it. Fix an issue where players could enter an incorrect state when being stunned while under, while using the all spec scanner in a scanning event. Fixed an issue that made it possible to throw luggables and grenades through walls and floors if standing too close to them. Added a unique sound event for when players absorb fire burn damage with toughness. Fixed a case where the backstab sound could trigger for enemies that were in front of the player. Enemies. R uh, removed push force. Removed push force applied from shots by scag uh, scab drag shooters and scab drag gunners. Oh, good. So when they shoot you, you don't like windmill wildly backwards. Fixed issue where the bulwark shield would not properly be disabled when light or medium staggering forward. The change would mean that the bulwarks will be easy to damage when it is staggering forward. Fixed issue where the shield explosion from the scarab, uh, the scab captains did didn't abort sticky weapon special attacks from chain and force weapons. Fixed cases where the scab trapper could shoot through fences, grates, or other transparent barriers. What about shooting through walls? It can still do that. Fixed issue where kills from a poxburster explosion did not contribute to the player killing the poxburster. Change the number of players the demon host kills before leaving to one across all difficulties. This change is to address the frustrating the frustration of teammates waking up demon hosts, also causing in innocent players to die from it. Okay. Change the scab trapper aborts their shot net sound and plays a stop sound if interrupted or shooting to better indicate that you're su that you successfully triggered its shooting cooldown. Riveting. And there's some just HUD and UI fixes and some morning star interaction points should now be easy to detect. Voice over and audio, meh. And um, of course the biggest in this patch, which is why it's almost 10 gig. So they fixed loads of the cosmetic things, which I think we'll all be very pleased for. Changed the chest bag to be less flat on the veteran's great coat outfit. The psyker's uh, hood with psyker collar headgear should now properly display longer hairstyles. Or I think that's a weight off all of our minds. Uh, fixed clipping issue for all of the Ogrin's armor. Well. For all of the lower body commensic, the recon fatigues, padded brute, convict garb, reinforced fatigues, bulwark trousers. So I guess it means all the others are still clipping. And then just a load more fixes for cosmetic for sorry, viable cosmetics. And some other fixes and tweaks. What else have they done? Fixed a crash, which could happen if a player joined a mission in the exact moment the mission was transitioning from the lobby phase to the Valkyrie loading phase. Fixed a crash which could happen when accessing the Shrine of the Omosite in the Morning Star. Fixed a crash that could occur during level up if the gamepad disconnected during the process. Fixed an issue where some penances <laughs> sorry, could be completed at a difficulty lower than intended as stated. E.g. penance missions played on Malice being completed on Heresy. Well, I think we will all sleep a lot better tonight. Knowing that uh, all of these very important fixes have been made. So there you go, folks. That is patch 17. We've been waiting nearly three months for a new patch. I think they've knocked this one out of the path. Well, knocked out of the park, should I say. Not path. And uh, yeah, there you go. It's, um, that's that's uh, Dark Tide for you. And uh, that's also why you haven't seen many videos for Dark Tide on this channel, because there's nothing really going on. There are lots of lovely videos for Hell, uh, Hell Divers, though. Yeah, check it out. But anyway, that is Patch 17. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please like, subscribe, ring that little bell for notifications. It really does help us out. And uh, I shall see you all for the next one, whenever that is, when they add some more content, maybe. So until then, take it easy, enjoy, and I shall see you later.